In order to be able to correlate alarms, we have defined a number of concepts. Chief amongst these is an event. An event is simply something that occurs at a given point in time. As you can see here, this point in time is specified by the generator data attribute. In our model, we have different kinds of events. We have events to describe the movement of trains, events described in a log, and events to describe the messages exchanged between different pieces of equipment. One kind of message, which is interesting for the purpose of this demonstration, is the alarm. Alarms are generated at a point in time, since they are events, they are produced by a piece of equipment, and they are related to other alarms, either by an is caused by, or by a causes relationship. It is precisely these relationships which we want to infer in order to be able to correlate alarms produced by the different pieces of equipment. A second main concept in our model is an online object. We have different kinds of online objects. For example, level crossings, or track objects. Within track objects, we have switches and different kinds of track vacancy proving devices. Axle counters and treadles. Each of these contains a number of properties which are necessary to correlate the alarms that they might be involved in, such as the neighboring object on the tracks, the track they are located on, how they are connected to each other in terms of communication, and which messages they produce. Existing line going from Spa to Pepinstow. Line number 44. On this line, we will demonstrate how the tool can be used to correlate alarms between different track elements. In the model, we have digitalized all the trackside elements, such as the various track vacancy proving devices, the track segments, and the level crossings existing on line number 44. We have either generated or constructed instances of each of the concepts defined for our model. So we have an instance of level crossing for each of the 14 level crossings on the line, specifying for each one relevant information such as the line in which they are located, their distance from the origin of this line, the track segment, the track vacancy proving devices that protect the level crossing, and others. We have done the same work to describe the different track circuits and the different treadles which are present on line 44. In addition to describing the properties of each piece of equipment placed on line 44, we have also annotated them with their location on the graphical plans which describe the line. This information is used later on to locate the alarms which are raised along the line. Our tool uses information from three different systems. The interlocking, the train routing system, and the track vacancy proving I.O. information. From the interlocking logs, which we see here, we distill information regarding the level crossings, whether they are opened or closed, and whether they have raised or dropped an alarm. From the I.O. information that the EBP provides, we are able to distill which track vacancy proving devices are actually occupied or free. Finally, from the track's train routing logs, we can distill the position of trains at given points in time. We use all this to correlate alarms and events to the presence or absence of a given train. The raw data contained in the logs is transformed into higher level events by means of declarative proofs. In this case, we see a rule that transforms the information contained in the interlocking logs. Every line in these logs contains the interlocking that produced it, at what point in time the event was logged, and the equipment that produced the message. What you see here is a rule that states that if I have a log line generated at a given point in time by a given interlocking, 
and produced by a given piece of equipment identified by its ID, then if there is an interlocking with the same ID and a level crossing with the same ID as the equipment which produced the event, and finally that the interlocking controls that level crossing, then, depending on the kind of event, we know whether it indicates that the level crossing is up or down, or that an alarm was raised or dropped. This allows us to abstract away implementation details of the format in which events are generated, so that we can further process them. Now that we have abstracted away the technical details of the events contained in the logs of the different systems, we can proceed to describe how different alarms can be related to each other. We do this again by means of declarative proofs. In this case, we have a rule that states if a level crossing raises an alarm and a neighboring track vacancy proving device also raises an alarm within a given period of time, then the alarms are probably related to each other. If we dive into the rule, we see that if we have a level crossing which raises an alarm, and this alarm is generated at a time t0, furthermore, this level crossing is protected by a track vacancy proving device, and there is another track vacancy proving device neighboring the one which is protecting the level crossing, this also raises an alarm which is generated at some point in time t1, and the difference in time between the alarm raised by the level crossing, T0, and the alarm raised by the neighboring track vacancy proving device, T1, is less than, in this case, 2 minutes and 30 seconds, then the system infers that the original alarm was caused by the alarm raised by the track vacancy proving device. The idea here is to describe a plausible scenario in which a level crossing remains closed for too long because a train was parked in the neighbouring track segment. Therefore, the level crossing could not... We have extended the application showing how our alarm correlation model could be used to identify the alarms which are caused by other alarms. In this proof of concept application, we have a map of the whole railway network, with highlighted regions that show which part of the network are actually taken into account in the model. When we zoom in, we see that these highlighted sections are two parts of line 44, which is the line that goes between Spa and Pepinster. For this demonstration, we have simulated the passage of time in order to demonstrate how we would be able to correlate alarms that occur in real time. On the top left-hand side corner, we have the controls of the simulation of time passing. We see here that we are currently on the 18th of May 2016, at more or less midnight. As we start our simulation, we see the passage of time. But, since this is the middle of the night, nothing interesting is happening. We can pause the simulation and just move forwards in time. We see that now it's 1.30am, 2, 3, 4, 5, and now it's 6 a.m. In our display, things have started to appear. There are two red stars in each of the sections taken into account. The little numbers, 2 on the top, 5 on the bottom, mean that there are two alarms that have occurred in the top sector, and 5 in the bottom. We double click on this one to zoom onto our schematic representation of that section to see where the alarms have occurred. We can see that two alarms have occurred on this side, one here and another two over here. Looking in more detail, we see that an alarm has occurred on a track vacancy proving device here. An alarm has occurred on level crossing number 6. And an alarm has occurred on level crossing number 7. By hovering over an alarm, we can see more information about it. In this case, we see that the alarm was raised because the level crossing remained closed for 2 minutes and 33 seconds. 
On level crossing number 6, it remained open for 2 minutes and 41 seconds. Furthermore, our model has inferred that these two alarms are related, and therefore they are connected by this line. As we hover over each alarm, we also see a number, in this case, 2E7494, which represents the fact that, at the point in time at which the alarm was raised, train number 7494 was present on that track segment. This information is obtained by cross-referencing the information from the interlocking, which describes that an alarm has been raised, with the information on the train routing system, which states that a train was present in this particular track section at this time. These two systems are of course independently developed, and in principle, they are not connected to each other. However, due to our alarm correlation system, we are able to see that this alarm was raised when train 7494 was in track section number 058. Whenever an alarm is raised in our proof of concept tool, it is possible to ask the reasoning engine which inferred all the information about this alarm how it came to this conclusion. That is, the engine is able to explain its reasoning. So let's find out why the alarm generated by level crossing number 6 is in fact related to the alarm generated by level crossing number 7. To do this, control click on the alarm of level crossing number 6. A pop-up window appears, which is the ODAS Workbench explanation interface. What we see here is that an alarm was raised on level crossing number 6 because it remained closed for too long, in this case, for 2 minutes and 41 seconds. If we open this alarm, we can see all its properties. For example, at what point in time it was generated, the fact that it was generated by level crossing 6 on line 44, the fact that it was raised when train 7494 was in track segment 058, that this alarm was caused by another alarm, i.e. the alarm that was raised on level crossing 7 on track 44. Now the system can explain why these two alarms are related. We see here the confirmation that it is because the level crossing was closed for too long. If we dig further, we see that... First, there is an alarm raised on level crossing number 7. There is also an alarm raised on level crossing number 6. Both alarms are raised within 2 minutes and 30 seconds of one another. Finally, they are located within 300 meters of each other. This information is available because the model contains the distance of each trackside element from the origin of the line. From all this information, our system was able to infer that in fact, the alarm raised on level crossing 6 is indeed related to the alarm raised on level crossing 7.